Hello! So in this video, we're going to be doing a slightly hard absolute value question. As you can see from the title, we're going to have an absolute value inside an absolute value inside another absolute value. Wow, that sounds very scary, but it's, it's not too bad. You'll see in a minute why. So before we can do this question, I have to give you a few more properties that I have to talk about for absolute value. The first property, so we're going to talk about some properties before we actually do this question. So the first property is that the square root of any number squared is equal to the absolute value of that number. And the reason for that is because the positive root, the root, the square root of a number, so this sign, the square root sign, only takes positive arguments. So if I take the square root of a number squared, it will only return the positive quantity. So if I take the square root of, the square root of negative 4 squared, I'm not going to get back a negative 4. I'm only going to get back 4. And the reason for that is because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So as a result, I'll only get back the absolute value or the positive quantity. The second property is that if I have this multiple of absolute values, I can just write them as the absolute value of the multiple values. That should be fairly straightforward. The same thing with division, so property three. If I have the absolute value of A over B, I can just write them as the absolute value of the individual numbers divided by each other. That should, again, be fairly obvious. The next one is, if I have the absolute value of an exponent, well, I can just write that, of course, as the absolute value of the number to the power of the exponent instead. So that doesn't matter. These next three are actually really important, and in fact, they're so important, I'm actually going to use red to kind of emphasize their importance. So the first one is the absolute value of a number always has uh, two cases. So if the absolute value of a number is equal to a, well, that's always equal to x equals plus or minus a. And that should make sense because the absolute value of any graph can always be, always be split into its positive or negative portions, which we talked about a few videos ago. So this one isn't as important because we talked because we used this in the last video. These next two are very important though. The next one is if I have the absolute value of a number is less than a number, this can be you can take out the absolute value provided that you use an inequality instead. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if I have the absolute value of a number is less than something, well, we can write this as x is between the positive and negative cases. So if the absolute value of x is less than a, that means x is between minus a and a. This one is very important. So I'm going to even start that actually, just to kind of emphasize that point. And finally, the last one, if I have the absolute, absolute value of a number and that's bigger than a, well, this is equal to x is bigger than a or x is less than negative a. We're not going to use this so often, but we will definitely be using this a lot. So let's do an example. So this one, I'm going to change colors because I can. Okay, so for this one, well, so when I write this out, don't don't panic. It's not going to be that bad. You can have the absolute value of the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus three minus two minus four is less than or equal to three. Okay, this sounds crazy. How are you supposed to solve a triple absolute value? Oh my. Okay, it's not too bad right away. Don't 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 panic. We will be using this property right there. Remember that if I have the absolute value of a number is less than something, we can always split it into two inequalities, which we kind of have. We have the absolute value of something. It doesn't matter if there's more absolute values. The point is that the absolute value of something is less than something. It doesn't have to be, strictly speaking, it, does, it could be less than or equal to. It doesn't matter. As long as as long as as uh, at least less than, we're okay. So what we can do is we can now split this. We can write this as minus three is less than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus three 
minus 2 minus 4 is less than or equal to 3. So this kills off one of the absolute values. That's great. Now, what can we do here? Well, we can add 4 to both sides to get rid of this minus 4. So if we go ahead and do that, we will get 1 is less than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2 is less than or equal to 7. Okay, now we should probably do the case situations. So we're going to have the negative case and a positive case. So let's do the negative case first, because that one is a little bit, more, little bit more interesting. So the negative case. Well, in this situation, we're going to have, let's see, 1 is less than or equal to the negative of, let's see, this gets rid of the first absolute value right there, or rather the second. So that's going to give us x minus 3 minus 2 is less than or equal to 7. So if I divide both sides by the negative quantity, well, actually, we don't have to divide. We can just distribute the negative throughout this absolute, throughout this term. So this will give us 1 is less than minus x minus 3 plus 2 is less than or equal to 7. So now if I subtract 2 from both sides, we'll get negative 1 is less than or equal to minus absolute value x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. Okay, now we can divide both sides by negative 1. If we do that, we will get 1. And remember, if I divide both sides by negative, the, the inequality is going to flip. So this is going to equal 1 is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 is bigger than or equal to minus 5. Okay, now let's work on these on a separate case-by-case -case basis. So as long as you keep your work uh, organized, it's not too bad. We just got to be really careful about all the different cases that are going on. So now we're going to get 1 is bigger than or equal to x minus 3. And here we're going to get absolute value of x minus 3 is bigger than or equal to negative 5. But this case is very interesting because the absolute value of a number is always positive. So it doesn't matter if I put in negative 1 million, 0, 5, 10, or whatever. This is always true. It's always going to be bigger than negative 5, no matter what. So we don't have to do anything here. We can just ignore it. Because this case is always true. So we don't need to even worry about this. Okay, so back to this one. Because we have the absolute value of a number is less than or equal to 1, we can once again use the rule above. So for a reference, that was rule 6 here. So as a result, we can now split this into 1 is bigger than or equal to x minus 3, which is bigger than or equal to negative 1. Of course, you can now add 3 to both sides. So if you go ahead and do that, we'll get 4 is bigger than or equal to x, which is bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, well that's not so bad. So this will, this is one of the, this is part of our solution. So this is one situation. Okay, now this, remember, this was all done assuming that we had a negative case. So now we got to look at the positive situation as well. Well, okay. So for the positive situation, so I'm just going to put this on the side here. So for the positive case, so in this situation, we're going to have 1 is less than or equal to, let's see, there is no negative this time. So we're going to have the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2 is less than or equal to 7. Okay, now we can add 2 to both sides. To get rid of this 2 on the middle. So if you do that, we're going to get 3 is less than or equal to x minus 3, which is less than or equal to not 7, but 9. And let's see here. Now we can again split this into two different cases. So the first one here is we're going to have 3, let's see here. Yeah, so in this situation, we can split this absolute value into a positive and negative case. So this one is going to give us 3 is less than or equal to x minus 3, which is less than or equal to 9. And in this situation, we're going to have 3 less than or equal to 
minus x minus 3, which is less than or equal to 9. Okay, so now we can go ahead and add 3 to both sides here. So this will give us 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 12. Okay, so we have another set of solutions here. Here we could distribute the negative, uh, the negative through this whole thing. So this is going to give us 3 is less than or equal to minus x plus 3, which is less than or equal to 9. We subtract 3 from both sides. So this is going to give us 0 is less than or equal to minus x, which is less than or equal to 6. And here we could divide everything by negative. Dividing by negative means we got to flip these inequalities around. So this could so this is going to give us zero is bigger than or equal to x, which is bigger than or equal to six. Okay, so let's kind of compare what we have done. So we used our rules, or rather our rule, to simplify down this absolute value starting from the very start to this case, and then we proceeded step by step. We broke this down one more time into positive and negative cases. And then we went from there. We did several more cases and we kind of simplified it all the way down. Doing so, we got this situation for x and these two situations for x. So let's just summarize that here. So we got two, 4 is bigger than or equal to x, which is bigger than or equal to 2. Here we got 6 is bigger than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 12. And here we got 0 is bigger than or equal to x, which is bigger than or equal to 6. So all we have to do now is we kind of... Oh wait, hold on. That should be a negative, I believe. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 0 is bigger than or equal to negative 6. 6, and that should be negative 6. Yeah, that should be negative 6. Okay, so all we have to do now is put this in order. So in interval notation, so we're going to get minus 6, comma 0. And the reason we use square brackets is because there's an equal sign for all of these inequalities. So as a result, we need to use square brackets. And because we are joining different domains together, we have to union them. So union 2, comma 4, union 6, comma 12. And that's it. That is our answer. So I'm just box that real quick. And that's it. So despite it looking like a really scary problem at first, right there. So despite this looking really scary, as long as you remember your properties and just do it step by step, just slowly going at it, it's not so bad. Okay, with this, I will see you in the next video. Have a good night or day, <laughs> depending on where you're from. See you around.